A very good afternoon to all of you and a warm welcome to the latest in uh, the series of webinars hosted by Signatura. My name is Matthew Pierce and uh, I'm usually to be found on a screen in the Super Sport Studios, but today I'm coming to you live from this magnificent studio at Century City, which has uh, been one of the results, a positive result of lockdown and an opportunity to broadcast uh, over the internet on a variety of topics. And obviously I've been looking for some legendary sports people to talk to uh, during the lockdown, but today I'm in the company of a property legend. John Robbie has uh, been an integral part of the property industry for many decades here in the Western Cape, most prominently, but also elsewhere in South Africa and more recently uh, spreading his wings to development opportunities in Europe. But he has been a trailblazer, a pioneer in many ways, and uh, the location where we are sitting today bears testimony to that. Johnny, it's great to be in your company and to, to have this chat and reflect on this wonderful career and, and perhaps we could start by just sharing some of the lessons uh, that you've learned uh, through all these decades in the industry. This COVID-19 crisis has given us pause to reflect on, on what we've done well and perhaps what we haven't done so well and how we approach life and business going forward. So perhaps to start with some reflections on, on lessons and learnings. Thanks, Matt. Uh, lovely to have you here with us in Century City. And a warm welcome to everybody out there who's listening. Um, well, you know, um, thinking about it last night uh, and trying to put it into perspective, um, trying to encapsulate four decades of being in this industry and um, what, we, what I thought would be the best way to, to really epitomize that um, would do to be to able to show you a three-minute clip of all the uh, trials and tribulations and successes and hard times through these last 43 years. And um, I'd like to kick off with that and then thereafter we'll get into the nuts and bolts. Um, so here we go, off we go, thank you. Let's talk about the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. We're red everywhere, essentially, down by four, five percent. This could be the most serious recession in decades.
China is now reporting many more cases. The outbreak spreads. The new coronavirus may be the first pandemic in recent memory to shut down the world. Well, that is an apt question. So, so what now? I mean, let's just pick up on a couple of things there, John. Uh, first of all, the music. Look out, because here I come. This is me. <laughs> this is John Robbie. So, I I reflecting in that very brief video on, on the various macro climates and environments that you've operated in, you've, you've had to be resourceful, you've had to be adaptable, you've had to be flexible. Mm. So, what now, where we are standing today? Well, I think um, we've got to look at it in the context of uh, pre-COVID and post-COVID. Uh, I think the South African property market uh, had been struggling for 18 months to two years uh, before the COVID hit us in March this year. And we were already starting to feel the shakings and the rumblings of, um, of let's call it discontent in the property market. Um, where we are today and the impact of COVID uh, is, has been dramatic because you can imagine this is like a massive big tanker mm -hmm. and it's running, it's, fly, it's sailing in the sea and boom, it, it's a massive big iceberg mm -hmm. and it comes to an abrupt stop, boom, that's it. Mm -hmm. um, and the impact of that in, in our business is we deal with people, we uh, see at our launches, we interact with people, uh, it's the excitement, it's the vibe, uh, and it's getting into the projects and the selling, which of all of that now is by the wayside, and we now in a situation where we have adapted to a, a virtual world, and um, we're getting along fine and we're having success, but not what it was meant to be. So the property market is, until the vaccine comes, is going to be re-rated and it's going to be rejigged to deal with um, what the current challenges are. So bearing that in mind, you can't, and it would be uh, foolish of us to think we could just carry on. So we've had to alter our product offering. And, and what does that mean? It means that we, we are going to be selling at much more competitive prices because the COVID has forced land prices down. We're buying uh, uh, at better value. We have a very important factor in that we've got the lowest interest rate since the Great Depression. Uh, we've never, certainly in my time, uh, have seen interest rates of uh, below 7%, uh, depending if you're half a below prime or, um, or one, but let's call it 6.75, 6.5%. And, and, and what should happen in a property market with interest rates like that? That is the start of the buying opportunity if you look at the cycle. So we uh, are bringing products to the market which are going to be very affordable, value for money, in the same, uh, in prime areas, and then utilizing, of course, the lower interest rates is there's no better time to buy than now. Um, and uh, that gives us optimism uh, as we go forward and we work our way through uh, the, the current uh, COVID crisis. Well, as we spend uh, time together over the next while, we're going to be exploring and unpacking some of those opportunities. But we'd also love to encourage you to participate uh, using the Q&A tool uh, at the bottom of the Zoom menu. If you'd like to address a question to John, we will get to as many as we can uh, within the allocated time and then also uh, use the opportunity to respond after the webinar uh, to some of the questions that we don't get to in real time. So please feel free to uh, use that uh, Q&A tool. John, uh, in that video, uh, we saw some, <laughs> some very humble beginnings. Uh, I, I think I saw uh, a headline there, family loan of 2,000 Rand. Uh, so y you started uh, from, from very small roots, but have grown this incredibly fertile and, and adaptable property business. How did it start for you? What attracted you uh, to the property industry in the very first place? Well, I come from a family that uh, was in the building industry. My father uh, was a window manufacturer and so building was in my veins. And then when I started to study, I, I met a, a lovely young man called Leon Cohen, who has become my lifelong partner. Um, uh, and we were still in those days playing rugby and, uh, and off we went and we decided we'd start building. 
Um, and how we didn't have the money to start building, so we thought, oh, let's start painting and doing alterations. And that's, in fact, how it all started. But the real love was for property. So it was property and uh, uh, marketing and selling and creating products that weren't in the market, which, uh, which, which really got us going. And um, that's how it all started. I mean, in those days, Constantia was open, large, open tracts of land. Um, and many owners had actually acquired plots. And we said, well, look here, what we can do is we'll, we'll devise and design a, a plot and plan. So you bring us your plan, we'll quote, quote for it, and we'll build you the house. And, uh, and that's how the this fame, now famous term plot and plan evolved. So, uh, and then we said to ourselves, well, you can't just do that. Why don't we build ourselves and put some furnishings in, put some lovely landscaping, and, mm -hmm. uh, and create a brand. And that's uh, where it all began in the, in the sort of the early to the middle 80s. Yeah, so you talk about concepts of plot and plan and landscaping, uh, furniture, show houses that you, that you really brought to the market. They were relatively new innovations at the time, but it, it seemed as though it was all focused on, regardless of the community, it was about encouraging property ownership. Correct. Now, very, very valid point. So, if you, you, I mean, property ownership, if you take for in the US, it's one of the biggest key indicators in the US economy is housing starts. Um, so, property ownership in this country is vital because once you've got a stake in your property, it's your, it's your asset, uh, you've created, you're creating your own wealth. Um, so, we, we always believe that um, home ownership, and especially for first time home buyers, was an absolutely vital part to, to create the cornerstones of the beginning of, of, of home ownership. And um, therefore, we, we, just, we, we wanted to then, from, from that stage, go forward to create um, estates and, and, and then, of course, followed by mixed-use development and then new urban renewal, uh, all the projects that followed. But home ownership, and in those early days, um, the then... Uh, regime had a, a first-time home buyer subsidy, which widened the ability of young people to own their own property. And um, we are so optimistic that we can do that again in the future, mm. that home ownership becomes a vital cog and key in, a new, in, in, a de in our current democratic dispensation. And John, it, it strikes me that a lot of what you have done has been uh, characterized by partnerships at, at various levels. So we, we, we'll talk a little bit later about some partnerships moving into Europe, but, but even here in South Africa, there's been a public-private partnership. There's mm -hmm. been a, a reach across a wide range of, of communities, mm -hmm. if you look back at your track record. Yeah, I think the biggest opportunity and one of the highlights for us was the unbanning of the ANC and the release of President uh, Nelson Mandela. When, when I saw that 1990, I said to myself, here we go, let's create a public-private partnership. And, and how we did that was we, we saw the disadvantaged communities that were squatting in places, uh, parts of Cape Town, especially the, our first one was at Marconi Beam, where we could rehouse that community to formal housing right close to where they were going to work and therefore didn't require public transport and, and in that way create new suburbs. Mm -hmm. And very successfully, uh, we, we were able to do that at Marconi Beam and then subsequently at uh, Westlake, which is at the end of the Blue Route where you see the richest of the rich living right opposite the poorest of the poor with, in, with uh, factories and offices and the American Embassy and shopping all in one urban precinct. Um, and and for, for me, that was always going to be the basis of how we alter mm -hmm. our, our, our country and how we get to bring people together rather than everybody living apart like it was in, 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 the, in the old days. John, before we, we went live here, we were chatting about this, this sort of sense of negativity that persists right now. And, and that's not a South African only thing. Mm -hmm. That's all over the world. I mean, the, the world has been thrown into turmoil. But yet you, you're a positive person and, and you always come across as such. So in that context, what do you see as the immediate future of property development, both here in South Africa and perhaps starting to reflect on opportunities in Europe? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm very optimistic. Uh, firstly, I love my country. 
I'm a, I'm a true African. I love uh, what I do. And um, we've been through these ups and downs before. This one's a tough one. Um, but we know that when it gets, uh, when, when there's turmoil, there's opportunity. And uh, we are very optimistic about our new products we're bringing online. As I alluded to earlier on, it's fantastic value. I mean, it's at prices that we lost all that many years ago. Um, and we're able to do that because of the, 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 the turmoil. And uh, that gives us the opportunity. And um, we, we believe that um, we'll work through COVID and the property market will recover like it's recovered uh, in, in over the last 30 or 40 years. Um, and property will stand its test, in, test of time. Um, as long as they are, the, the properties and the projects are built in the correct areas and they offer value for money and they give, the, they give uh, and especially in the, in, the, in the bigger projects which are I encapsulating the urban renewal, which is live, work and play. Um, these are the concepts and the, the places that people are going to buy in as we go forward. So I believe that we're at the bottom of the, of the cycle. We've, uh, as I said, alluded to earlier on, we've got exceptionally low interest rates. In fact, you can rent and, uh, and, uh, and your rent is the same as your bond. So, you know, why rent when you can afford to buy? Now, that, that uh, analogy only comes once every 30 years. So we're in that situation at the moment. You can borrow 100% and you can pay. Your bond is the same as your rent. So if you are an investor and you, and you buy a unit from us, you are going to be positive from day one um, because you'll be getting more than, than what your bond repayment is. And now that's a good sign because that's mm -hmm. how it works in Europe. And uh, we'll get on to that when we get into Portugal. So uh, in a country where we have inflation, prices are going to go up. And therefore, there's going to be opportunity and investors who, who, who have followed us and will follow us and owner occupiers are going to get the opportunity to, to do very, very well out mm -hmm. of the, 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 the property market as to where it is now. So I... I'm positive. Uh, we want to do as much as we can. Uh, we believe there are gaps because uh, in, in also in very difficult times, uh, the construction prices we're getting are, are competitive. Everything is honed in to give the best value for money at this point in time. So, so let's immediately go and unpack some of the opportunities that are available now or shortly to come on stream uh, in, in your portfolio and, and starting with the quarter. So a, a, a final few opportunities available there. Yeah. So coming out of the, the last couple of years, we've managed to sell 95% uh, of our stock, uh, which is normally what would happen with a business like ourselves. That's Robbie and Signatura and Ewood is the same. We're selling off the plan. And these were the, lo the, the last bits and pieces. Uh, the quarter is a prime uh, property in uh, Devartacant. Uh, and uh, it's probably another three, four months to, to completion. We've got a handful of units left over for sale. Great opportunity, great site, and also great pricing. So um, very optimistic about uh, this joint venture with, uh, uh, that we have with Nedbank and our uh, partners. I know you're very proud of WEX, WEX, <laughs> uh, WEX 2, first of all, if we have a look, uh, the, the, the yeah. opportunity there? We, we, we like Woodstock very much because we like the concept of the urban renewal where this was an old factory site with the shoveled warehouses and uh, we also know that we're very close to the inner city and we can produce value for money products and um, we also have the opportunity to have a, a, a hotel uh, within this development, great facilities, great retail with a spa and restaurants at the bottom um, and we're adding on now uh, into the precinct, as we call it, WEX 2 and WEX 3, where we're offering uh, uh, and will be offering products from 700,000 Rand uh, you know, to the 1.2 million Rand mark. So we're going right into the heart of, uh, and we're going to collaborate these units with furnishings, um, and we're really going into to be creative to try and get the, the pricing as competitive as we possibly can. Okay, so we've spoken about WEX 2 and WEX 3 uh, in, in that precinct in, in Woodstock. We're going to move uh, to Freerde Hook, and this is something new on the radar, the Deer Park opportunity. Yeah. Well, I mean, we started uh, the Signature brand in Freerde Hook. We like Freerde Hook very much because it uh, is one of the few suburbs in Cape Town that faced you north. 
Um, it's got fantastic views, and this is a, a site that abuts the Deer Park with uh, and Table Mountain hanging on top of it. And we've got 24 units there, and we're excited to bring that to the market, also again at very good prices. And, um, you know, we've waited a long time to get these zonings through. They're in built up areas, but eventually have had the, uh, uh, got everybody comfortable around there who was, wasn't comfortable. And uh, we will be ready to launch this in the next couple of weeks. And then uh, moving slightly further towards the sea to Sea Point and uh, Regent Street. Yeah, so we, we've been in Sea Point for, for a while and we've got an opportunity uh, in Regent Street, just up the road from La Perla, very close to the beachfront, to produce uh, uh, six or 70 units at around a million rand. Uh, starting up, starting price, uh, uh, and uh, we look forward to letting that go. We'll be ready towards the sort of mid-November. Again, trying to, again, as I say, create value in great areas. And that's what happens in tough times. Um, so very excited about being able to do that. And John, your overall vision for Signatura going forward, I mean, just going through uh, what you have done recently and what you're bringing to the market, uh, in a very challenging time, uh, speaks a lot to your, your confidence, yeah. but, but also to your vision for, for Signatura. Yeah, Signatura is, um, you know, is, is, is a dynamic young company and it's very flexible and it can move very fast. So we will look, uh, hunt down the opportunities um, and where, whereby we can acquire property at really good prices because you, you've got the opportunity because of the turmoil of what's happening um, uh, in terms of COVID. And uh, uh, we will continue to st stick around at that bottom end of the market and offering as much value as possible. Um, in our mixed use developments, obviously COVID uh, has brought, uh, brought an absolute hot to our hospitality uh, and our restaurants. I mean, there's been absolutely, I mean, it's been closed since the middle of March, we hope. Shortly, that uh, uh, sanity will prevail and uh, the regulations will change somewhat so we can get back to some type of normality. But it's, it's, it's been very hectic for the tourism industry, what's happened. So, but there will be, we live in this great city, one, to us the greatest city on earth and the most beautiful. Uh, tourism will come back and we'll be ready, uh, waiting for that as it, uh, as it returns. So John, apart from Signatura, we've, we've hinted uh, throughout our chat so far about an expansion uh, into Europe, and we fairly recently saw the la launch of the New World brand. Mm. So tell us about that, how it came about, and, and some of the work that you're doing under that New World banner. Yeah, well, you know, um, uh, Leon and myself have traveled abroad for, for many years looking at different opportunities, um, uh, especially uh, in Australia, the UK, and, 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 and the States. And we couldn't really quite find uh, what we were looking for. We didn't want to invest in REITs or any of the listed side, listed sector. We wanted to actually, I wanted to actually do the work myself. And uh, we were headhunted down here in Cape Town by a lovely man, uh, Newman Leash from uh, uh, Geneva Manage Group, Management Group, GMG who have an association uh, with Skybound Capital, uh, Cliffy Warren uh, and co. And uh, he said to me, w have I ever been to Portugal? I said, it's never been on my radar, <laughs> but uh, he convinced me and off we went. Uh, we, uh, and he, we landed in, uh, at, in Lisbon and went straight to the site. And I mean, it was really, uh, Alex Living is in the most beautiful part of Lisbon, Amoreas is the suburb. Um, and uh, had, it had the, the fundamentals that we could do exactly what we're doing in Cape Town on this development. And we put our JV together, we went to the market uh, last May, we had a great success in South Africa and are ongoing um, selling with uh, around about 110 to 115 units. Uh, we are now on site, we're building uh, with one of uh, the Ribeira construction, Alvas Ribeira is the top contractor, or one of the top contractors in Lisbon. And um, uh, Lisbon is not too dissimilar from Cape Town. I think that's why there was a feeling that I, you know, we, I could understand it and understand uh, the designs and the way it works and the regulations and how the authorities work. Um, but it's a Portugal captured my imagination. It's a, it's a great country, small country, only around 10 million people, but it's popular. 
and it's had great success post 2012, um, post the getting their uh, finance from the EU, which they wisely invested into infrastructure. So it works. Um, there's no crime, and uh, there's. Uh, if you look at the latest report from uh, Knight Frank, uh, there's only four uh, cities in the world that they are predicting positive growth, and one of which is Lisbon. Um, so we remain very optimistic. We will be starting on our second project uh, called My Villa, which is exactly like Woodstock is to Cape Town, My Villa is to Lisbon. Uh, so again, there were so many similarities and working with the professional team, we've moved our uh, two or three of our top people across to Lisbon. So we've got people on the ground, Newman uh, and the GMG have got their engineers and their, their um, uh, financial people and we've joined up in an office together and it's been a pleasure working with these guys and uh, uh, we're very optimistic that this will be the start uh, of going forward to do other projects in, in Portugal and then looking elsewhere where there will be opportunities when the world normalizes. At mm. this point in time, <laughs> you can't get there. Um, you can't get out of South Africa uh, unless you take a boat to Luderus, I suppose, and jump <laughs> on a plane to <laughs> get to Vintuk and then try getting to Lisbon. But uh, we're waiting until November. There will be the first direct flight. TAP uh, will have a direct flight from Cape Town to Lisbon. Uh, which I think is going to make a great, uh, uh, it's, it's important. And the other thing on Lisbon, Matt, which I've always said, which uh, um, always uh, fascinates me, is that you can borrow at 1%. So you're, you can borrow and, and, and gain a, a, a mortgage bond at 1%, and you're earning 5, 4, 5%. I mean, we give a guarantee for the first two years of 4%. But, I mean, it, you're up at 5%, 6% positive from year one. You know, we weren't really used to that. In, in South Africa, it was always the opposite way around. Mm -hmm. you, were, you, were, you were earning 4 5%, but you were paying 10 11%. Mm -hmm. And you were praying and hoping for inflation, uh, which is what really carried the market through. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I alluded to earlier, it's very important just to accept that we now at the point here where we actually are going to be positive right from day one mm. um, because of the pressure on prices and uh, uh, as to what land is and, and more realistic prices for us to buy our land at. And Portugal's been on South African radars for quite some time and specifically around uh, the golden visa opportunity. But what, what I found interesting uh, in collaborating quite closely uh, on some of these projects in, in Portugal to date is that the property proposition stands on its own feet. It, it, yes, there is an opportunity uh, to, to get a golden visa for a South African buyer, but, but the property proposition is front and center. Yeah, 100%. You know, for us, it's all about the property and it's where it is and what are we going to sell it for? Are we 20% uh, below what uh, the opposition in, 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 in Portugal and specifically Lisbon were selling it? That was that what drives the design and and drove everything that uh, that we could stand back at the end of the project and say, boy, we, we really produce something that's special. And those uh, investors that have bought from us, together with the Golden Visa buyers, but will know that they've got something that's going to appreciate in value. It's a, it's, you can knock on the door, it's real, it's not shares. Um, and that's why, uh, in our view, that uh, Lisbon really in the period ahead of us uh, is going to go from strength to strength and and still uh, in euro in euro terms lisbon is 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 cheap mm -hmm. so we can uh, are going to produce even for, uh, if you convert it back to rands from the euros to the rands south africans are going to find it affordable mm -hmm. so i think that's where the real opportunity and this is about uh, a plan b this is not uh, and we're looking at upon whether it be in Johannesburg or Durban or in Cape Town. It's, it's, a, it's a property opportunity offering value. That's what we're looking mm. to achieve in New World. So, John, how do you, uh, investors whose appetite has been sparked by, by what they've seen and heard today, how do they uh, start a process of engaging Signatura for, for local and, and New World for potential offshore investment? Yeah, well, um, I think the best way is, uh, of course, our websites are live, and I think I'm not mistaken, uh, the, uh, Anton McAlone and Michael, they're the numbers up there. They can be 
got hold of and they'll be able to help you with uh, with the, uh, the stuff with New World and with Signature's new projects um, and uh, they'll be able to give you all the assistance that you require. Before we go to uh, quite a few questions actually that have come in and, and we look forward to addressing some of those so, so people can keep them coming. Uh, if, if you had to sum up uh, over this journey, you know, spoken about how adaptable and flexible you've had to be, but what are the biggest changes that you've seen and, and that you're having to take into account now uh, with your approach to, to property development, both here and abroad? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. You know, I, you know, I don't want to get into the, the politics of the situation, but what we really need, and, and I hope uh, uh, this message gets out there, we, we, we as South Africans, we need confidence. Mm. The business community needs confidence because without confidence, you can do nothing. So when he, the scene is set by the state to produce that confidence, South Africa will fly. And the quicker they can do that, the better. So we have to adapt in those circumstances that we hope and pray in the years ahead that sanity will, will prevail and, uh, and, and, and our leaders will be able to tell us and, and drive us and, and motivate us to invest more by giving us the confidence uh, that, that we, we, we so dearly missing. I think um, property is a changing game. Uh, you know, uh, one areas to areas uh, differ. So you have to be so in, in queue with, with what, what's happening in, in your market to, be, to stay on top of it. Mm. I mean, if I look at uh, what Leon uh, uh, and John Chapman, my other partners, and Colin Green and Colin Anderson, we're a big group today, what they've done here at Century City and continue to do across all the other Rabi projects is remarkable. But it's the same principle where we started with. Mm. Always value for money, always service, and always guarantee, and always trust. And that is key. If, you, if we can offer that and continue to offer that, we will survive. And we'll do the same in, in Portugal mm. because it's exactly the same. The Portuguese are incredibly fickle when they purchase. They won't buy until you have all your rights in place. They won't buy um, uh, until the builder is on site. Uh, and therefore, that suits us because mm. that's the way we operate. We want to make sure we do it absolutely right so that our reputation and our brand stay the test of time. Yeah, it was fascinating to see the level of local interest in LX Living yeah. uh, when you launched it uh, in Lisbon. The real excitement and genu genuine buy-in from the local community, which is key. Yeah, I think also the other uh, big advantage of Lisbon. Lisbon, three big markets. Uh, it's the well, wherever there's trauma in the world, people seem to gravitate uh, to Lisbon because of the golden visa. That's, uh, so if you look at the moment, the Chinese, Hong Kong Chinese. But the big markets are uh, Brazil, um, are very close to Portugal because of the Portuguese, obviously. Um, and there's a, it's like its sister country on the other side of the, of the, of the Pacific. And then, of course, Europe. Um, uh, you know, the French, the English, uh, are, they love Portugal um, and they love the weather. And, uh, and therefore, it's, it's because at this moment uh, you can't get there, mm. um, it, it's making it tough, but that will change. Um, and in the next month or two or three, as the hotels are reopen, and I know certainly in, in Lisbon a lot of the hotels are open, so the wheels will start to turn and uh, the, the world will rectify and, and, and it will come back. Well, Johnny, I'm going to uh, refer to some of the questions now that have been uh, coming in via the Q&A line, and we'll get to as, as many as we can. The first question has come in from Alan. How long do you think interest rates will stay so low? Well, I mean, you know, if, if, if you uh, look at the, the economics of it, I mean, we're looking probably at interest rates of, uh, for the next two years at these levels, around these levels, and then as hopefully the economy picks up and the more demand and so you know of course interest rates will, will go up um, uh, you know we we got li used to living in a era of interest rates of 18 20 percent even that uh, when that terrible man put his finger up uh, in 86 uh, the, the 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 dreaded rubicon speech the interest rates were 27 percent mm -hmm. but you know we survived it so to have interest rates at these levels it's very important because it, it's interest is a big factor in development and um, 
But to answer that question, I would say 18 months to two years at these levels. There's also unprecedented times for monetary policy makers. Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. It's difficult to know yeah. how to deal with these circumstances. Uh, Rukudzo has asked, is there any possibility of Signatura tapping into the sectional title affordable housing market in the future? And he gives an example similar to Burgundy Estate. Yeah, Rukudzo, um, uh, it's a very good question. We are... Um, looking uh, at that market and we are in Woodstock going to be bringing on an affordable housing product which um, would be in that range uh, of the sort of 650, 750 uh, thousand uh, sectional title opportunities. Um, we want to be there. We can get there at the moment uh, because of, uh, as I've alluded to earlier on, uh, for a whole host of reasons, but we want to get as low as we can and so we definitely are, that's on our radar. And, and that would be consistent, actually, with uh, some of the work you've, you've done in the past as well around the Western Cape. You al alluded to, to it earlier, where those opportunities exist to, to help revitalize communities. Yes, no, very much so. So, um, you know, we, we are, are absolutely, um, it's in our heart and in our DNA to, to do affordable housing. It's how we grew up. Um, when I say affordable housing, I'm talking about the bankable, uh, you know, the, at the seven, eight, nine hundred thousand rand level, and we need to do that to build new communities. We we also need the institutions um, to come to the party and and start financing and assisting the private sector if you want to really make a dent, uh, because we need to house, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the majority of the people in South Africa. Um, so. Let's hope and pray there are aggressive institutional plays mm -hmm. that allow people like ourselves, uh, we the jockeys, you know, to go out and, and start producing. Robert has asked, where would you put your money today? Industrial, retail, residential, offices? Uh, well, I mean, uh, we actually cover all those uh, different uh, offerings. And, um, but at this point in time, I, I believe that residential offers, for me, uh, the best value for money and where there's a where there's a need and that's also residential uh, for renting and for purchasing so residential for me is now my number one uh, retail well we know what's going on with retail with the, the, you know the, the advent of the, uh, the amazons of the world um, offices are going to have to adapt slightly to fit in with the new norm um, and industrial um, is is uh, is is there, but they, uh, we, we, uh, it's more the people that are going to be in their logistics that there's, uh, I believe, a stronger market. So, uh, but I, I would stick with the residential on that one. Okay. We have an anonymous question. Is it not better to wait for a year or two in order to buy when the market may be at the lowest? I mean, this is a question really around uh, your assessment of where the market is now as opposed to where it could potentially go. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it goes any lower, I, might, I won't be sitting here, I can tell you. So, um, I think we, I don't think the market can go much lower than where it currently is. I'm talking from a developmental perspective. It's not possible. So, um, it's got to turn. And as I say, we are at the bottom of that turn. And um, it might go along and be, uh, and, and plateau for a year to 18 months. But then it will start its climb up again. It, it, it will have to, because it's driven by supply and demand. Question that's come in from Anton. Uh, what are your views on the future of leisure property uh, in the higher end golf estate segment in the, in the next couple of years? Well, um, we, we have uh, over the years in the Rabi property group uh, built a, a couple of golf courses. I don't believe there's any market at the moment for golf estates. Uh, I think it got way over traded. Um, and, uh, you know, it's now sort of trying to find its feet. So mm -hmm. I don't see. Uh, opportunities in the in, in the in the golf golf market estate, um, and there is one uh, further question there. What's my view on the minus property market for the upper end? Look, I mean the whole property market's re-rating downwards. That's just part of the recession. So it's going to get to a point where it's going to flatten and then it's going to go up again. That's just how the cycles have worked over the years. So um, uh, minus is always going to be a holiday. Destination and uh, it will go up and down as things get better. Hopefully, another anonymous question: Do you think that uh, COVID will force 
South Africans to invest more overseas. And it's an interesting word to use, mm. force. Uh, yeah. You're certainly experiencing South Africans investigating that possibility, uh, but uh, you know, you're also seeing people perhaps hedging their bets and, and having property investments on, on both sides. Yeah, I, I don't think COVID is, you know, COVID is overseas and it's, yeah, it's everywhere, but um, we're definitely seeing the, um, the demand of South Africans to broaden their portfolios across, uh, across the world, uh, including in South Africa, South Africa they'll invest, but part of their portfolios are being, uh, are being uh, sent, uh, you know, invested abroad, um, and, and part of that which goes, uh, property is, is, is one of the very lucrative or aspects of where you want, one can, it, uh, can invest. I've got a question in from Willem. We just need to say there, what will the starting price be in Lisbon and uh, how do you get a loan? Now, I know you, you, New World has got a team uh, yeah. on the ground in Lisbon, but it's also uh, possible to, to get that kind of information here. And, and the various aspects of making a purchase or an investment there are in place. Yes, so I think the best thing for Willem is to contact um, uh, the, 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 our two guys, Anton and Michael, and they'll be able to give you all the prices and, and how do you uh, acquire a, a mortgage in, in Lisbon. Another anonymous uh, question uh, that has come in, as a buyer under pressure to find a good rental return in my buy-to-let property, would you advise me to hold or sell? No, I, I feel strongly that it's not the time to sell now. So uh, if, if you've got a buy-to-let uh, portfolio, you must hang on um, and, and, and ride it out. It's, you know, as I say, uh, hopefully things improve and uh, you know, we hope and pray this time next year it will be a lot better, but I definitely wouldn't be selling now. We've uh, covered Johan's question on Hermanus. Uh, Chris has asked, uh, with more people working from home, uh, what are the pros and cons for the property market? Now, it's interesting that you spoke about, uh, in the previous question, John, about residential being your place, because there's a lot of uncertainty in, in the commercial space. How are people, I think, and I can talk about this from a personal point of view, at the, at the start of lockdown, everybody was saying, you know, online conferencing and, and meeting rooms and so on was, was the way forward. But I now get the sense, not only five months later, which in the greater scheme of things is a relatively short space of time, people are already starting to tire yes. uh, of, of that type of meeting. You know, mm. people need uh, personal contact, uh, sharing of information face to face. Th there's a warmth uh, to doing business that has been lost uh, uh, during this time. So uh, there surely is though, a little bit of a wait and see in the mm. commercial sector as to how businesses are going to respond. And perhaps we're heading for a hybrid of uh, some work from home, uh, so rotating uh, time in the office. So there are some unknowns, but one thing is for sure is that, that, that residential is, is going to remain a, a good asset class. Yeah, definitely. Now, it's, it, that's very important point you make about the, the office market is what will, and, and the feeling coming out from abroad too, is that it's going to be a hybrid. Um, it's not, we're not all going to work from home. And uh, I, I mean, I, I share that, I echo what you're feeling. I mean, I, I, I prefer in our business, we like to be at an office where we can talk to one another, we can interact um, and we're more productive. I don't know how you would run a big corporation, everybody working from home. So I think it's going to be a hybrid. Um, uh, so the residential market will stay firm, um, but the office market will, will change somewhat in the short term then. I believe it will go back to being what it was. Once mm. the vaccine comes, please God, whenever it comes, mm. it will, people will go back to, to, to wanting their offices. A question in from Akampa, is now the best time to flip properties? I think you probably answered that a couple of questions ago. Yeah. You, you, you're saying right now, in your opinion, and over these more than four decades of experience in the market, you don't want to be looking no. to, to exit now. No. I agree. No, no, definitely not. Um, and, and why give away your property? Because everybody who wants to buy a property now wants a, wants a bargain. Mm. They think uh, you, know, you can just take 50% off your price. It's not possible. Mm. So no, that's not the right time to sell now. Uh, the growth in Lisbon um, is, is we see upward. Uh, you know, as I've mentioned to you, 
this current 220 period as we go through COVID, we will see six, seven, eight percent growth in we believe in, in, in selling prices. Lisbon is interesting because Lisbon doesn't have inflation, but it has typically the supply demand. So you have in its truest form. So people want to buy, but there's not enough supply. So therefore the prices are going up and um, and that is uh, where they're getting their seven, eight percent increase, mm. and we'll get, we believe, in the in the years ahead. Neil, that was uh, referring to your question on the growth in Lisbon, and and John referred earlier in the webinar to the, the fact that Lisbon is one of four cities that expected to achieve yeah. property value growth uh, this year, one of only four globally. Uh, and uh, I think, as we've mentioned before, the down payment. Uh, let, let's get you in touch, Neil, with the, with the team either yeah. here in Cape Town or in Lisbon. Nicholas has asked uh, whether you pay a premium for a golden visa property. No, um, golden visas. Uh, just briefly, at 500,000 euros, gains you a property to for you to be able to apply for a golden visa, um, and um, there is no premium. So what normally happens is you properties are, are based around that 500,000 euro starting point, um, and uh, th uh, that that's the price. And obviously, when you price the units, you price for the golden visa. But mm. it doesn't mean that the properties are more expensive. Mm. Jane's also asking a golden visa question around whether the program is going to be limited to rural areas. I mean, yeah. that's certainly not the case no. now. No. Uh, and and I think. It's important to to recognise that as these programmes evolve, there, there may well be changes and, and alterations, but th there is absolutely nothing right now that says there is any change on the horizon. Correct. There's been talk in Portugal, but uh, absolutely nothing has changed uh, in, from a legal perspective. And I think COVID has put a lot of, uh, you know, they've got far more important things to worry about than the, mm. the, the Golden Visa program. Golden Visa has brought a lot of very valuable investment into Portugal and uh, the feeling people we're talking to is that would continue. And, and I think it's also perhaps important to, to note that there is legal advice. So you, you've got legal advisors around this program who can deal with any of these queries. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Well, John, I think uh, that's it from uh, the, the, the Q&A. We've, we've managed to get through all of them and within the, the time allocated. So perhaps uh, we could just finish with some final thoughts. I mean, hopefully you and I will be watching rugby somewhere quite <laughs> soon because I know, apart from property, that's a big passion of yours. Very much so. Um, but just some final words, both from the Signatura perspective here in South Africa, uh, New World uh, moving into Europe. Uh, you remain, having built this 43-year-old uh, operation, uh, confident in your ability to deliver on the principles on which you founded this business. Correct. And, and you know, nothing uh, really changes. I think we, we are exactly like we were when we were younger, maybe a bit more mature, uh, but our principles remain the same of, of integrity mm. and honesty and and uh, and we value those and that's the core of of how the people that it's, you know it's not only leon and myself now there's you know in signature i've got uh, david cohen um, and i've got jonathan stoller two great guys i've got uh, anton mackalone and 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 michael so we've 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 chosen and headhunted excellent guys in in in, in portugal i've got brad parker who you now is uh, almost fluent in his portuguese he tells me <laughs> <laughs> uh, i hope you're listening brad and um, and then of course in the in the Rabi team, you know, working for Rabi is like a big family, mm -hmm. and and that's our strength. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to remain with our feet on the ground, work through this uh, this period now. It's a tough one, um, uh, but you know when you say we say in that in the property industry, uh, this is a one in a hundred year flood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they call this one in a hundred uh, one in a hundred year pandemic. Mm -hmm. So a one in a hundred year flood is when. You, it, it, it's tough because that means you're basically going to wipe out, uh, there's going to be floods around the whole of Cape Town. Mm -hmm. There's going to be no ground left. So just to keep, put it into that context. So um, we, we, again, remain committed, love our country, mm -hmm. and pray that we can get the show on the road and all of us can play a meaningful role for ourselves and our children and my grandchildren and, and live in this beautiful city and this fantastic mm -hmm. country and just 
get it sorted. And the common denominator over four decades has been vision. Is vision, sure. And uh, 2020 vision takes on a whole new meaning uh, this year in it our does. lives. It does, it does, it does. Sometimes, <laughs> uh, you know, when you wake up and, uh, and you put on the TV, um, you've got to shake your head and uh, I think, is this really happening? So, mm. um, but, you know, we live here and uh, we, we, we've got a, a, a beautiful, the, for me, what motivated one of my great loves is the people of South Africa. Mm. The people of South Africa are beautiful. Mm. Um, and wherever you go, you walk, you can talk, and you can't do that in New York, in Sydney, Australia. They think you're crazy. They mm. probably think you're you trying to attack them. But yeah, the warmth that we have across all our peoples is something very unique, and it's, it's in my heart. And that's what drove us to do those very, very forward-thinking uh, uh, public-private partnerships at mm. the time. And when Nelson, uh, like, uh, Nelson Mandela, President Mandela, opened up the, uh, uh, the reconstruction development program, he chose Marconi Beam because he said, this is where we want to see the mm. reconstruction and development program at work. Those are the things that, that mm. got us pumped up in the early years. Well, John, it's been wonderful to share this time with you, to reflect on this amazing journey and to see how you've had to reinvent and, and repurpose over, over a number of years. So, so thank you for your time and thank you to all of you who've uh, taken the time to join us today. We hope that you, you found it interesting and we encourage you uh, to get in touch, uh, to share in, in the vision both of Signatura and New World in the company of John Ravi and his team. Thank you for joining us once again. A very good afternoon.